guys, guess what? It's Indiana week. <laughs> That's something I never thought that I would say, ever. Like it's Penn State week, it's Michigan week. Never, it's Indiana week, but here we are. Like I never would have expected to say, oh, we're playing Indiana this weekend. For the first time, literally ever, like ever, ever, we have a legit matchup against the Hoosiers. Now let me set a couple things straight. I'm not terribly concerned about the game. I don't think it's going to go in Indiana's favor by any stretch of the means. Um, but when you sit down and you're like, oh, this team is a number nine team, take a step back for a second. However, Ohio State has won 24 straight games against Indiana. One did result in a tie, but there's no reason for me to believe that they're not gonna make it number 25 on Saturday. Again, it's just like a mind thing to think, oh, we're playing the number nine team in the country. Indiana got here from a four and oh, they're on a four and oh streak. Impressive until you realize the teams that they beat have a combined record of three and 13. So then even then this morning I was watching ESPN and they had Indiana's schedule and their percentage of winning the rest of their games, which for Ohio State, they had a 10% chance of winning. And then Wisconsin, they have at an 11% chance of winning. And Wisconsin is ranked 10th. So I was like, how do you have such a low chance of beating a team that you're technically ranked better than? So anyway, but let's go ahead and take a step back. A couple quick hitters for Ohio State and what makes them so great and in my heart, best team in America. The So obviously everyone knows Justin Fields is off to a hot start, hot. I hate that I just did that. Currently, Fields has accounted for more touchdowns than he has in completions throughout his first three games. In his first three games, he has had 13 touchdowns compared to his 11 incompletions. He's 72 of 83 on the year with 908 yards. <laughs> 11 touchdowns and zero interceptions. And a fun little note. My earring just fell out. And a fun little note from Wyatt Crocher on Buckeye Bulletin, uh, Justin Fields currently has an 86.7% completion percentage, which is the best three game start to a football season with a minimum of 50 attempts by anyone in college football since at least 2000. So that's cool. Um, even if you think about it, last year, Joe Burrow, who won the Heisman Trophy and is now with the acclaimed Cincinnati Bengals, he had an 83.3% completion percentage, just to put that in perspective. Um, obviously, we have our great dynamic duo in Chris Olave and Garrett Wilson. Throughout the first three games, they have combined for 42 receptions, 632 yards, and six touchdowns. You love to see it. And of course, aside just from Olave and Wilson, we also have Jeremy Rucker, our tight end, who has caught for nine passes, 60 yards, and three touchdowns. Again, obviously, as we all keep saying, everything that is making Ohio State so strong and dynamic on the offense, one, our wide receivers are doing a beautiful job tied in Jeremy Rucker, as I just mentioned. But then of course the dual threat with Justin Fields, his ability to pass and run like a freaking ninja. I hate that I just said that. Who, like a ninja, really? Couple things to know about Indiana. They're coming to Columbus, sporting their first top 10 ranking since 1967. I'm pretty sure my dad was just born. One of my parents were just born in 67. I don't know who, but think about that. All the things they did in their lifetime where Indiana could even get to a top 10 ranking again. Hmm. Notably, they've obviously had huge wins over Penn State, Michigan, and Michigan State, which I would say on any given year would be extremely impressive. To watch how Penn State and Michigan have just absolutely imploded on themselves since those losses, I don't find it very impressive. That's just me. If Penn State would have went and then, I mean, just absolutely just demolished everyone in their path, like in their path following that loss, okay. If Michigan would have rebounded and would not be just continuing to embarrass themselves every Saturday, Okay, that's just not the case. So I'm gonna keep saying their wins are all against teams who have a combined record of three and 13. That's not great. However, their quarterback, Michael Penix Jr. does lead the Big Ten currently in passing yards with 1,070 and is second behind Justin Fields in touchdown passes with nine. I'm gonna say that Penix's top receiving target is Ty Freifogel. I'm not saying that right. And if I am saying that right, then Freifogel, 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 Freifogel. Anyway, he currently leads the conference with 424 receiving yards and four touchdown catches. The Hoosiers defense is currently fourth in the Big Ten overall. And the Hoosiers defense is fourth in the Big Ten for both total defense and scoring defense. Their defensive unit has a league best 10 interceptions and is plus eight in turnover margin, which is third best nationally. 
And their standout quarterback, Jalen Williams, is also tied for fourth best nationally, three interceptions. He has more interceptions than six Big Ten teams have this year. And I think that is probably the biggest talking point to this Indiana-Ohio State matchup is that, okay, yes, Indiana is good. They are ranked in the top 10. And you're starting to think they've lost to team or they beat teams that are just, like I said, literally imploding on themselves. But there are things to take away from Indiana and it is their defense. They do force turnovers and not only do they force turnovers, they capitalize on those turnovers. So many times you see teams say, okay, yeah, force a turnover, get that fumble, you get that pick and then you just don't, you just sit there and you're just like, that was fun, but we're not gonna score. Take the ball back. We just wanted to keep it spicy for a second. But that's not what Indiana does. They will force a turnover and then they are scoring with it. So that's something that Ohio State definitely needs to keep an eye on. A lot of people are saying they will put pressure on Justin Fields. And yeah, I'm sure there might be some pressure, but I don't see it being anything that Ohio State's not able to adjust to. I definitely think our offensive line will be able to step up and make those changes so that their defense isn't putting as much pressure on Justin Fields. Regardless, he is a dual quarterback. He is very smart. He can clearly read what's going on. I don't see it being that big of an issue. Um, people are also saying Penix is such a great quarterback. Blah, blah, blah. Yes, but again, he is one dimensional. I would really say Indiana's offensive offense is one dimensional. It's nothing like Ohio State. And that's what all the analysts and everyone is saying and really attributing to is that, yeah, Indiana is good and they're definitely riding a hot streak right now. And they're the best team that they have been in, in years. But it's just not going to be enough when it comes down to this matchup. But basically, uh, Indiana is really going to end up relying strictly on their quarterback. And that's not great. Uh, it's either Penix or bust for Indiana. Whereas Ohio State, it's Justin Fields, Jeremy Rucker, Garrett Wilson, Chris Olave. I mean, do I need to go on? It's the entire team. So I definitely think that Indiana is going to have their work cut out for them. Um, pretty much everyone is picking basically a three touchdown margin for Ohio State. I definitely hope that that happens. I can definitely see the first quarter being a little eh, iffy. Uh, second quarter is really where Ohio State has been standing out and they've been just demolishing their opponents in the second quarter. So I think especially after having a bye week um, and just being out of their rhythm a little bit, I would definitely give the first quarter to the Buckeyes just to try and readjust and get back into the swing of things. Um, but I definitely see this being a blowout. They're going to send those little Hoosiers back to Indiana. 4-1. and one. It looks like a big matchup, a big sledgehammer if this was a Penn State well we tried that but if I was playing Penn State at number nine Michigan at number nine I would definitely be a little iffy about it I would have this little like just deep pit of what's gonna happen but I don't have that with Indiana I think they are good I don't think they are as consistent and strong and just I don't think they're as good as Ohio State they're talking about it on ESPN and they asked they said do you think Ohio State has any pressure Coming into this, knowing it's been a 24 game win streak against Indiana, I think that adds anything to it. And they're like, no. They know. Ohio State knows what they need to do. And I think that's the thing, too. Ohio State knows, especially after losing their game last week to Maryland, you, we don't have many chances. We don't have any chances. The chances we have are the only ones that we have. We're not getting any more. If anything, we might lose some. So you really have to capitalize on every moment to make sure that they're saying enough to the committee that we are one of the top four best teams, if not the best team in the country, do not count us out just because we've only had <laughs> seven games. So every game is really worth <laughs> like two games to Ohio State at this point, I would say. You have to destroy who you're playing and you have to send a message so strong that nobody is second guessing whether or not you should be in the playoffs. So I think that's Ohio State's agenda. That's definitely on their mind. Whereas Indiana is thinking, you know, guys, we could do this. We might be able to pull off the biggest upset of the year. And I don't think that's going to happen. I think it's cute. I think it's a really good idea. I love a good underdog nine times out of 10. This is the one time where I would just like the underdog story to go anywhere else. Anywhere else. Um, score for the game. Um, I was going to say 49-17, but I feel like I always pick 17. I always pick 17. So let's go 49-21. I think Ohio State is going to just... All right, well, best thing about being 3-0, chance to go 4-0, go Bucks. I want it to be Saturday already. Okay, bye.